Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to this episode of Gardening on the Gulf Coast. We're happy to bring this program to you. We've been facilitating Gardening on the Gulf Coast series for the past two years. It's been two years now, last year and this year, and we're moving straight ahead with our programming. Today's offering is being presented by Kevin Gibbs. He's our horticulture agent with AgriLife Extension in Nueces County. We'll be discussing lantana varieties for the Gulf Coast. I'm really looking forward to this program. I'm really interested in lantana varieties, the breadth of lantana varieties that are appropriate for our area. I think you, you will not be disappointed. You'll be pleased as well. The program today is being recorded and will be available for viewing. If you um, uh, or have a challenge uh, writing down any notes, of course, you can always reference that video. It will be available later on after the program. Uh, Kevin will also be able to provide you with a survey. We'd like to get to know how we're doing during this series and bring uh, quality programming to you as we schedule for the next year for the end of this year. Uh, just a quick shout out uh, to um, our agent, horticulture agent in Jefferson County. The next program will be um, August the 18th, uh, provided by horticulture agent David uh, Oates. Uh, we're looking forward to his program on ground covers, so we hope you'll join us at that time. If you could uh, do, do us a favor, if you have a video feed on or your microphone on, we ask that you please turn those off for, as a courtesy to the presenter as well as to your fellow registrants to this program. We will allow um, uh, questions, of course. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please feel free to put them in the chat box. If you've gone, if you've gone on this platform before, you know how to get there. Other than that, look for the little bubble, the little word balloon to use as a chat function to ask any questions. We're joined by fellow horticulturist and uh, Ag and Natural Resources agent, uh, Ginger Easton Smith. She is down in Aransas uh, County. Uh, hello, Ginger. And uh, David Oates, of course, uh, from Jefferson County. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Kevin Gibbs. Thank you, Stephen. You're you're a really great uh, co-host this morning, so I appreciate everything that you've done. Uh, so I want to take some time to talk about lantana varieties. So uh, lantanas, I remember as a kid growing up and, and we always had lantanas um, growing out there. They were one of my grandmother's favorite plants and she always had the several of the plants everywhere. And I was impressed with how they withstood the heat and how they continuously bloomed throughout the summer when other things seemed to be withering and, and uh, fading away. The lantanas always seemed to be happy as a lark. So. I, I became fascinated with those at that point. Uh, so just a little bit about the Lantana family. The Lantana family is uh, out of the Verbena, Verbenaceae family or the Verbena family. There's about 150 different species of them that are found. Uh, originally, they were native to the Americas and to Africa, but through introductions during the col colonization period, uh, they're pretty widespread across uh, the globe at this point. Uh, they consist of herbaceous plants, uh, which tend to freeze back to the ground, and some shrubs in tropical areas uh, getting up to six feet in height. So they can be pretty sizable, some of the species can be. Uh, they're mostly aromatic, and if you've ever been around a lantana before and rubbed the leaves a little bit, you, you can tell that there is a scent or an odor, uh, an aroma to it that, that you can uh, smell instantly. And the, they're pretty rough in texture. The leaves are, are, are pretty scaly or pretty hairy and, and they're fairly rough. But what I can tell you about uh, all lantanas if it, is that the birds and the butterflies actually absolutely love them. Uh, if you have ever planted a lantana, you'll notice that, that the hummingbirds and the butterflies are constantly uh, surrounding them and, and looking for their nectar. So again, uh, they have lots of, of small to medium sized leaves but that are pretty uh, rough in nature. They do produce berries and the berries have been one of the um, drawbacks to lantanas. Although the birds actually love them, um, they pick them up and they carry them and they drop the seed and, and they cause the widespread of lantanas. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, why some of the lantanas have ended up on the invasive species list in just a moment. And one of the cool things is that uh, because of how well they withstand the heat and how well they bloom during the summer, um, horticulturists have been working on hybridizing them. So they have bred out some of the unwanted traits and you'll see uh, as we go through some of these species that, that they're really 
um, our ideal plants now um, for attracting birds and butterflies without the invasive properties that that uh, caused them to be of concern at one point. Some more information about lantana. lantana. Some of the species are considered invasive. The large leaf lantana, known as lantana camara, um, which is the plant that, that my grandmother had in her yard, um, is considered to be invasive. It's on the invasive species list. So um, I don't know if you know about the invasive species list, but I have put that in the resources. Uh, if one of the horticulturists would drop that in for you. If you're ever wanting to check to see if there is a plant that, that is considered invasive, there's an invasive text invasives list that you can um, check easily just by putting in the common name or the scientific name and it tells you what's invasive and what's not. The reason that the large leaf lantana was considered invasive was because it it does very, very well in disturbed areas. So as um, we had fires or as we had uh, new farmland that was uh, created or as we had deforestation that occurred, uh, it created ideal situations for the, these types of lantanas to grow. And then when you uh, factor in the birds on top of that coming in and eating the berries and dropping the seeds, uh, then you had widespread um, uh, spread of, of this original lantana camara. What's cool is it's this original lantana camara that all the hybridization has been done from. So um, you'll notice as we go through species that almost all of them say lantana camara. So, um, and there are lots of new varieties. Uh, you've got hybridizers. A lot of them are French that are creating new series of lantanas. Uh, just three of the series that I'll be highlighting, to, highlighting today are the Luscious series, the Bandana series, and the Royale series. Uh, we have our own native lantana called Texas lantana, and uh, all of our gardening enthusiasts are, are in love with this plant. Uh, you can find it growing on the roadsides. You find it growing, um, again, um, in quite a few different places. They, the one thing about all lantanas is, is that they are sun lovers. They like to have plenty of light. Um, the, the more sun they have, the better they do generally. And once they're established, they're almost always um, drought tolerant or drought hardy so it's difficult to kill them once you get them established so uh, they're good for uh, the type of weather that we have uh, they can be propagated by cuttings or division and their flowers appear in umbels so you've got groups of flowers in these little umbels that that are really cool and the flowers tend to change color as they mature so you'll end up with these multicolored flowers that look like there are lots of different colors on there and there's often a mix of flower colors uh, red orange yellow blue or white and you'll see some of those as we go along as well so the first one we're going to start with is trailing lantana it's lantana montevidensis um, this is one of the few trailers that you're going to see on on this slideshow today so um, it and you're going to notice that as we go through these, as we get into these groups, these series of lantanas, they all have very similar growing characteristics. So you're not going to see a lot of change in, in these um, characteristics over here. Now this one's different because it's a trailing plant. Uh, it likes full sun and it, it only is going to get about a foot tall, but it can get up to four feet wide. Uh, it's a constant bloomer from spring through frost and it's resistant to most insects, especially lantana lace bug. Uh, by the way, this one has been rated a Texas superstar. And if you would like to um, make it to the Texas superstar website, I've got it here, but I also have put it into the resources. So we one of, of them will put that in there as well for you. So this has been rated a plant that will do well all the way across the state. So um, up, up to zone 8B. However, I've noticed that even uh, in the area where I grew up, I grew up in the Lubbock area, that plant this lantana uh, that my grandmother had would freeze to the ground every year, but it always came back and that was way colder than 8B. So I have a feeling that, that they may be a little bit hardier than what, what they're rated for. I think they're rated for what they're safely hardy to. So here are some other pictures of this trailing uh, purple lantana. You, you can see that it can be used to, to cover a hillside. 
Uh, it actually has a very nice color, and this one has actually much smaller leaves. By the way, I put in QR codes on all the slides today, so if you would like more information about any of these different lantana species as we go along, all you have to do is use your camera on your phone and scan the QR code, and it will take you to a website that has more information about each particular species. Okay, uh, our other, our other um, Texas superstar that's on this list today is New Gold Lantana, Lantana X Hybrida. And this one is very drought tolerant. Uh, I ab absolutely love this plant. I think it's fantastic. I've planted it and I've been pretty, um, pretty lackluster in paying attention to it and it still looks terrific every single time. So this one is, is beautiful yellow. Uh, and it's hardy um, all along the Gulf Coast and full sun and again two feet to four feet and it just stays blooming. Um, and I remember in December, January, I still had it out here blooming. So again, you can find that on the Texas Superstar list. Here's some other pictures of New Gold Lantana. And my beds look just like these, They're, they were completely full. And the, again, the birds and the butterflies absolutely love New Gold Lantana. The next one is Irene Lantana, Lantana Camara Irene. Again, I told you, you were going to notice that, that the uh, Lantana Camara was the basis for all of these hybrids. So uh, these are really cool. <coughs> what impressed me were the different colors that, that you're going to see today. I mean, they have really been working on coming up with some really neat things. What what worried me was that I don't see too many of these new colors showing up in uh, my nurseries and stuff. So um, we're going to have to really encourage them to get some of these out there for us. This one again is hardy up to zone nine, uh, full sun, uh, up to three feet by five feet, uh, sp uh, spring till frost. It says July till frost, but once it starts blooming and again, very attractive to butterflies and hummingbirds and, and moderately drought tolerant. Here are some other pictures of the Lantana Camara Irene. You can see it has stunning color. It's, it reminds me of that uh, pink and yellow bloomer that my grandmother had, but it's not invasive. So uh, I think I will use this one in the future. Then we have Dallas Red Lantana, Lantana Camara Dallas Red. Again, um, up to zone nine and three feet to five feet and all the same characteristics as you'll notice many of the lantanas on this um, PowerPoint have. Here are some other pictures of, of Dallas Red. I like how it has this kind of orangish color and but then uh, as it um, matures it turns into more of a red color. You're even seeing some a lot of yellow different um, variations today, so not too many whites. I'm seeing purples and, and reds and pinks and yellows, but not too many whites today. This one is Lantana Camara Pink Caprice. And you'll notice that it's got this beautiful pink right around the edges of the flowers. And it's fairly compact. One of the changes that you'll notice with with all of these series is that the older lantanas tended to be somewhat leggy. Um, they were bigger and taller and spread out more. And most of these series are are smaller and more compact. I'm not so sure that I would call them dwarfs, but they uh, are more compact in their in their growth habits. So uh, much more attractive for using in uh, your beds and stuff. And again, uh, same qualities, drought tolerant and attracted to hummingbirds and butterflies. More of the pink caprice. Next, we have Carlos Lantana. Some of you may find that, that some of, of these Lantanas have your share a name with you today. So have a master gardener named Carlos. So. This one uh, is uh, same characteristics as the others in this series, uh, up to two feet tall and two feet wide, spring till frost, butterflies and hummingbirds, and drought tolerant once it's established. 
Here are some more pictures of Carlos. I really like the the bright pink colorization on Carlos, so I think it's very nice. Stephen, if we have questions as we go, you can feel free to interrupt me, okay? Yes, sir. Here's Chapel Hill Yellow Lantana. Uh, this one, two feet by two feet, uh, zone nine. And again, hummingbirds and butterflies and drought tolerant once it's established. I've seen this one before. It has much smaller leaves on it. So uh, it's a denier. It kind of reminds me of one of the old fashioned uh, rambling roses. But uh, of course, it doesn't look like a rose once you get up close, but it's kind of the nature of, of how it looks. So here are some close ups of it. One of the things that's so attractive about Lantana is, is how they change color as they mature. So you have uh, one color one day and then the next few days you go out there and it's totally changed to something else, which makes it really cool for me. They're even coming up with some variegated varieties of Lantanas. Here's one of the two variegated ones on the list today. This is Lantana Camara Yellow Variegated. Uh, it actually gets a little bit wider, up to three feet. And again, same qualities, uh, attractive to butterflies and hummingbirds and other birds and drop tolerant once it's established. And here are some pictures showing the variegation, showing what it looks like. I think this one's really cool. Kind of has some of the coloration of, of maybe Pothos ivy, the, that white marble pothos. And here's one of the few white ones on the list today. This is Lantana Camara Havana Full Moon. It's up to three feet wide and two feet tall. And again, it attracts butterflies and hummingbirds and drought tolerant. Here are some of the close ups for you. Uh, one of the things that you can do with some of these new lantanas that you could not do with the older ones is you can put them into hanging baskets and make lantana hanging baskets out of them. The older ones uh, were a little bit too big and, and a little bit too lanky and just did not were not attractive in hanging baskets. These new ones, you can put them in the hanging baskets and they're very attractive. Kevin, I've got a, a question for you. We're Still waiting on our um, participants. If y'all have any questions, of course, please feel free to ask them. Uh, Kevin would be happy to to address them. But I have I do have a question for you. I know that some of the varieties that I'm used to uh, produce berries. Can you uh, help uh, our audience understand about berry production and bearing true to type? Do um, varieties like Havana Full Moon will it produce berries uh, with the seeds from that then um, produce a, a plant true to type? Um, what what I understand, Stephen, is that uh, they have hybridized them to almost be sterile. And so they're if they do produce berries, there are very few berries. And if uh, you get a plant from that berry, if it happens to be fertile, um, it's again still going to have that genetic variation that, that um, all plants that are grown from seeds would have. That's excellent. And and I guess another on another point that then um, I, I won't I promise I won't interrupt <laughs> unless we get a question. But um, uh, can you help our audience understand um, the uh, plants that do have a trademark name as far as uh, home propagation? Or uh, I guess it's really not an issue unless it's uh, propagated commercially, right? Right. I, I mean, if technically the the um, the law says that if it's trademarked or if, if it's uh, that you cannot produce without permission. But uh, we all know if if you're just uh, taking cuttings from your own plants at home and propagating them, that you're not going to face any civil problems from that. But you cannot uh, take them and and reproduce them uh, for commercial purposes or for resale. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin. You're very welcome. And I welcome the questions because I realize that a lot of this information today is going to be very, very similar because it doesn't change that much for 
um, lantanas. All lantanas love sun. All lantanas love well-drained soil. All lantanas will tolerate poor soils. All lantanas attract birds and hummingbirds and butterflies. I mean, it, it, it stays very consistent across the group. Uh, the only things that are changing slightly is the growth habit. Uh, uh, some of them are a little bit more compact uh, than others, but uh, for the most part, all of these new series are more compact than uh, what the older varieties were. And by the way, there are quite a few older varieties out there. Like I said, there were 100, 150 different species, um, but um, almost all of them that are being produced are being produced from Lantana Camara. So, so feel free to ask me questions, Stephen, it's fine. Okay, next on our list is Cherry Sunrise. Um, None of the information for cherry sunrise changes, but look at how beautiful this is with with the orange center and and the pink uh, Corolla outside. I'm just impressed with all of these new colors. It's it's really amazing that that they're able to run these trials and, and do these hybridizations and find all this stuff. This one is is actually our native Texas Lantana. This is Lantana urticoides. Some people may say urticoides. Uh, this one is hardy through zone nine. Uh, look at the growth habit up to six feet tall, up to five feet wide. So this one changes. This one is not considered invasive. Uh, it is our, our local native and it, it is considered to be perfectly fine. In fact, uh, Native gardeners will encourage you to only plant this one. I, I don't have a problem planting the others as long as they're not invasive. So, um, but I do love this one as well. Here are some of uh, pictures of it from Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Research Center. You will notice how it's a little leggier. It's not as compact and it doesn't have um, the same growth habit as what these new hybrids do. <coughs> Still love it though, and the birds and the butterflies I'll still love it as well. Next on our list, we start with the Luscious series. This is Luscious Bananarama. Um, it's still Lantana Camara, but uh, it's it's a hybrid. So again, this is one of the ones that has been bred not to be invasive, um, and uh, it's a medium water situation, but it's still up to three feet wide. Uh, spring or frost, moderately drought tolerant. Here are some pictures for you. I want to say uh, a thank you to Premium Winners. I called them when I was creating this and they said I, as long as it was just for education purposes, I could use their pictures and stuff as long as I gave them a shout out. So there's your shout out. Thank you for your information and for your photos and stuff. So this is Lantana Camara Bananarama. It's great for pots. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful uh, even compact enough that you can use it in like window boxes or in planters next on the list is berry blend luscious berry blend up to three feet tall still this attractive still drought tolerant uh, i like the the uniqueness of the flowers the center corolla seems to stay closed longer and uh, the others open up first it's really cool. I'm noticing just slight variations uh, in flower types as we go across these. Uh, so it's really cool. Next on our list is another yellow one. This is Lantana Camara Citron. Citron, and it's up to three feet tall and two feet wide. And it is a more it's a more vibrant yellow than what some of the others were. So some of the others are kind of a pale yellow. This one is is a, a very bright yellow. <coughs> Next on our list is one called Citrus Blend. Citrus Blend. So this is luscious citrus blend, and it it does uh, look like a citrus. It looks like an orange or or something out of the citrus family. So uh, it's pretty cool. And again, it uh, can be used in hanging baskets, can be used in planters, could be used uh, in lots of different ways. Uh, this one has uh, fairly pointy leaves, which is, is really cool. 
but I do love the, the variations of oranges that you're going to find with it. Next is Golden Gate. Am I moving too fast, Stephen, or okay? You're right on time. You're doing great. Okay. Next, we have Golden Gate. This is Lantana Camara Golden Gate, and uh, it's a uh, it's a deeper, a little bit deeper yellow than what the other one was. Um, still up to three feet wide. It is very compact, so you notice that it's good for planting boxes and for containers and hanging baskets as well. So, a great, great choice. Here is a purple one. This is Lantana Camara grape. Makes me want to say grape bake. This one is a little bit more compact, only 14 inches tall and only a couple of feet wide. So if you're looking for a, a compact Lantana, luscious grape might be a great choice for you. Still attracts hummingbirds, butterflies, uh, and still is tolerant, drought tolerant once it's established. And uh, and obviously the whole thing. Now this one uh beautiful papers. Uh it it actually uh reminds me kind of Angelonia just looking at how compact it is in that container. So here's one marmalade. Again, uh going back to the citrus theme. Um Lantana Camara Marmalade. This one's a little bit bigger, up to almost up to three feet tall and three feet wide. This one's cool. It's got a little bit lighter orange coloring to it. Next on our list is Pink Berry Blend. Pink Berry Blend. It's larger too, up to three feet wide and almost three feet tall. But look at that coloration, isn't that beautiful? Back to these pinks and yellows. I don't know what it is about these pinks and yellows that, that harmonize so well together, but they're, they're super nice. Next on our list is Luscious Royal Cosmo. So this is the Luscious series up to two feet tall and two feet wide. Um, it looks like it has large flowers as well. Very, very nice lantana. Here is another yellow one for you. This is Luscious Royal Pina Colada. I didn't know how to do that little tilde when I was typing this up, so it is Pina Colada. So. This one is a little bit more compact, uh, two feet tall by two feet wide, still has the same qualities for attracting butterflies and birds. So that one's great as well. But look at these beautiful yellow centers. It's something that's really nice about this one. Lantanas, by the way, can be used for cut flowers. I don't know if you knew that or not. This is great. Uh, some people like do not like the smell of, of the aroma of lantanas, but I put them into cut flower arrangements and they work great. Here is another shot at red. This is uh, Luscious Royal Red Zone. This one has almost true red, not quite. It's still in the orangish red area, up to two feet wide, two feet tall. Here's another, some close-ups, another couple of shots. Here is a yellow variegated one. Uh, this is Samantha. This is Lantana Camara Samantha. You'll notice that there is a change in uh, the size. This one is uh, only about a foot and a half tall and three feet wide so it's a spreader but doesn't get huge height on it here's a couple of more pictures any questions Stephen? 
No, sir, we, we've got a silent group today. I, like I said, there, there's not a lot of change in in how the the uh, lantanas are grown or how they behave. So uh, I'm not surprised that there's not too many questions. Well, uh, Kevin, I, actually, I have another question and it's related to maintenance. Um, you, you, there's some outstanding varieties. Uh, there's so much uh, diversity in the lantana um, hybrids. Uh, it's just amazing. And, uh, you know, this is an excellent uh, presentation to present to us the diversity of plants that are, you know, within this. As far as maintenance goes, um, what is a, I guess, a, a general, general statement that you can make for uh, maintaining the majority of these that would be put in the landscape? I can, I can make a general statement that applies to almost, well, I can make a general statement that applies to all the hybrids. They um, do not drop their flowers near as easily as what the older varieties did. Uh, they hold on to them. Um, the older varieties were notorious for if we had a storm or a big rain that you come out and there would be petals everywhere. The newer ones um, hold on to their, their flowers much better. There's little to no pruning required. Uh, the only time you would prune them uh, during the season is if um, you had some growth that was headed a direction you didn't want and you wanted to prune them back slightly. You can do that. So corrective pruning only. Um, they don't require a lot of fertilization, just general um, general nutrition uh, that you would give to just about anything else is all that's required for them. So uh, they they put up with pretty poor soils, so they'll grow in just about anything. The one thing that they do not like is wet feet, so you need to make sure that that they have well drained soil. They're they're not as intolerant as say rosemary, which which crumbles very quickly in wet soil, but uh, they do better if you have a well draining soil. Um, the one thing on all of these is each spring, just like with roses, uh, you should cut them back to just above the ground or, or a, a few inches above the ground, and they will come back out with the fury and, and go for a, another season. So I'm curious to know um, up in, up in the Houston area, up in your part of the area, um, did the lantana survive the the freeze this year and come back, or or if they uh, actually were killed out? Uh, the ones that I've seen down here in the Corpus area uh, all came back out, so they came back up from the root systems. Yeah, here in uh, in Angleton, um, the the ones that we have we have new gold around the. Uh, around the demonstration garden and uh, those um, came back like champs you know and we didn't provide any protection to them I think some of it was related to exposure you know where where they're located on the gardens but we experienced the same thing but yeah that's a really good question if there's any uh, any of our participants that are a little bit north of the uh, the Mason Dixon Houston line you know uh, go ahead and unmute your microphone let us know uh, we do have a question though uh, from Anne Marie she asks if you have a lantana that has gone leggy in a weed infested bed, how would you correct it or do you pull it at that point, especially the native? So um, if you got one that's gone a little leggy, how do you deal with it? What I would do in that situation is I'd first uh, get rid of the weeds because part of the reason why it's gotten leggy is because uh, there's not light down in that lower section of the bed due to all the weeds that are there. So get rid of the weeds first. And then at that point, uh, give it a good pruning. Uh, make sure to leave some foliage, but prune it back and, and it should come out and reestablish without any problem. So they're very forgiving of, of corrective pruning if you need to do that. But uh, I guess what I was saying earlier is uh, they're not in need of huge amounts of pruning un unless it's just something that's done for maintenance. Excellent. We do have a statement from Carol, um, a participant today. She says that she lives in the Bryan area and hers did survive the uh, freeze. Very good. Like I was saying, um, of all the ratings that I'm seeing from um, these hybridizers from um, the distribu distributors is saying zones eight, zone nine, but I have a feeling that, that they're going to come back up from the root systems in places that are even colder. So. Um, but I'm, I'm a bit curious to see. 
Uh, Stephen, do you guys see very many of these varieties that are, are put out? I mean, I know the big box stores buy what they buy and, and you're lucky if you get any variety, but I'm wondering why our local nurseries are not stocking a lot of these. Gosh, that's a really good, good question. The majority of, uh, as far as the actual varieties themselves, the ones that I, that I will see in local nurseries, I'm starting to see more of the uh, uh, variegated varieties, you know, seasonally. Um, more red, um, pure red varieties. Uh, New Gold, of course, is, is uh, promoted by our program and, and um, uh, seems to have gotten the, the popular consciousness, gotten into the popular consciousness. But as far as additional varieties, I, I think it's just an unawareness of the diversity of varieties, you know, so um, this information is useful for our registrants at least to know options and what to ask for locally, you know, as far as it's forming some sort of a graph, grassroots effort. But I, I, I really don't have a good answer for you, sir. I'm going to uh, encourage my local nurseries to to uh, start looking at some of these. I'll probably share this PowerPoint with them, let them see some of the different varieties. So, all right, moving forward. So here's Samantha, our second variegated one. This one is really cool. This is called uh, Bandana Cherry. This is out of the Bandana series. And it, it is a, an almost purple cherryish color. So. Uh, only up to two feet wide, two feet tall. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if there's this much vari variation within it that you're getting these other colors or if it was just the difference in the photography that they, they got this, so who knows. Here's one called uh, Bandana Cherry Sunrise. And notice that all this bandana series are all hitting the around the two feet by two feet range. More pictures of that for you. And then here is one called Lemon Zest. I think we're almost at the end. I wanted to say thank you to my secretary also, Stella for helping me do all these QR codes that we put in. So uh, she worked on QR codes while I worked on the PowerPoint. So this one is cool. It's It's got almost a white, light yellow around the outside and a darker yellow on the center. Again, two feet by two feet. This one's really nice. This is one of my favorites out of all of them that are in, this, in the PowerPoint in the presentation today. All right, that gets us to the end, Stephen. Any other questions? We have uh, a little bit of time, so uh, if you have questions about lantanas or want me to go back to any of the slides or anything like that, feel free to holler. Again, yes, Stephen. Again, um, it's only the original Lantana Camara that, that we have to worry about as being uh, invasive. That one is on the invasive species list, but all of these hybrids are deemed safe for the landscape and are not, they're not worried about them becoming invasive. So um, I think that's cool. All right. Gosh, Kevin, I, I think that, um... That is a that's a I, I really agree with your statement as far as presenting this um, information like this this uh, slideshow to local nurseries to help them be aware of uh, the diversity of, of species. There's quite a bit that will work up and down the coast, you know. So um, of course, with your permission, I'll I'll follow suit. I'll just bring on, just introduce our nurseries to it and course give you credit for it um, that's a lot of work um, for this um. one of the things also Stephen that I put into the um, into the resources today was the link to Texas Superstar um, I don't know if uh, all the members all of our public knows that they can go to the Texas Superstar list online um, and uh, 
Would you tell the group a little bit about what the Texas Superstar list is? Well, certainly, uh, Texas Superstar is a um, program that's been designed to identify those plants that will work across the ornamental plants and, and culinary plants as well, that'll work across the breadth of Texas, that'll perform well. There are research uh, stations um, uh, located in places like Overton. If you didn't know where Overton is, go towards Tyler, blink and you'll miss it. But um, it's an outstanding uh, place with, um, it's an outstanding research facility with colleagues that are uh, like uh, Dr. Brent Pemberton that are um, trialing out plants that, um, that uh, have the potential to work well for us as, as homeowners. Um, uh, so we will be successful with them in our landscape. So again, it's a program that's uh, been tied in with uh, the Texas Nursery and Landscape Association with um, an arm of um, our state uh, organization, Texas Department of Agriculture, um, as well as you know the, the uh, industry itself to identify those plants that will be successful for us in the landscape. Um, New Gold Lantana, is one plant that has been identified and has uh, been uh, attributed that um, that award for as a Texas superstar plant. And so when I mentioned that earlier, uh, that it has gotten a lot more, uh, uh, I guess, press from our organization and uh, push that it's uh, gaining some traction uh, in the public consciousness. Uh, certainly, the, the the plants that are used under trial are evaluated annually, and there are plants that are added to this list as well annually and, and uh, us as uh, professionals we try to keep that information present in the uh, to to you all uh, our uh, homeowners that are viewing this program so that you're aware of of the diversity of plants that we can actually use we do keep an eye on it uh, and do provide um, uh, all of the information that you need to uh, work with those plants in your gardens are present on the texas superstar um, in the superstar program so there is a publication that um, we do hand out in print, but there's also this wonderful resource online. I just posted that in the chat box. Uh, it's texassuperstar.com uh, forward slash plants, and you'll be able to find um, plants that will meet your needs in your landscape. Thank you, Stephen. Ginger, I think that's all for you had a place. No, it was just a comment actually about Go, when you go to your local nurseries, asking them for, you know, either specific varieties or just more varieties might uh, encourage them to bring in different things. Maybe so. I also noticed um, um, when I was on the Proven Winners website that they had a search thing on there where you could search to see what nurseries carried uh, those different varieties. So. Um, you could start there as well. But yeah, I think encouraging, uh, asking for stuff at our local nurseries, if they get enough people asking for them, they'll start to order them. So uh, that's definitely the, the, the way to get it done there. So, all right, well, I wanna thank all of you today for, for joining us and uh, you'll be getting a copy of this PowerPoint. You'll be uh, getting a, a link to a survey. We really encourage you to fill out that survey. It's very helpful to us. It helps us to shape uh, our programming so that we deliver programs that um, are more educational for you and that meet your needs much better and uh, that help us just to do an overall better job. So uh, you'll be getting both of those things as well. Um, if there's nothing else, then I think we're just about done and we'll wrap it up here. All right, Stephen? Yes, sir. Kevin, thank you so much for your expertise. Uh, again, uh, uh, such a diversity of land tenants that are available to uh, us as homeowners from the commercial industry. Check in with your local nursery, uh, review the uh, presentation when it's available to you. Uh, we'll get that out to you in a bit. Don't forget to join us again on August the 18th. We'll be joined, uh, we'll be uh, given a presentation on ground covers by our horticulture agent in Jefferson County. That's David Oaks. Uh, David's an outstanding horticulturist. We're very pleased to continue to bring this program to you. Uh, on a regular basis, starting around the same time, 10 o'clock in the morning on August the 18th. Also, another shout out to uh, our uh, horticulture agents that were online today and assisting uh, Ginger Easton Smith, 
um, a and r agent from down in aransas county uh, david was on for a little bit um, jefferson county sitting in the wings uh, and uh, yours truly i'm stephen brugger hoff horticulture agent for brazoria county here in angleton uh, one final shout out uh, the uh, texas superstar program is guided by these research stations but um, one of our uh, horticulture agents in uh, san antonio in bear county david rodriguez an outstanding uh, horticulturist helps to manage the program uh, and works with uh, our agents uh, as far as uh, getting information out to you in a timely fashion so thanks to you again for joining us um, we'll see you next time y'all have a pleasant day